Manhattan production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. Well, they, they, don't get it. they have to count it. Good evening, everyone. Uh, at this time, I call the 2024 membership meeting to order. Uh, we thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Kat Fimmel, the president of the 2024 RCSC Board of Directors. Joining me on the stage this evening are Board Secretary Jean Totten. Hello, everybody. And Board Coordinator Marsha Johnson. Hello. Uh, we also acknowledge uh, all of the uh, 2024 RCSC Board of Directors who are here with us this evening. Uh, we also uh, thank the Elections Committee uh, members for uh, their efforts and support of the meeting this evening and the membership. I want to acknowledge our audiovisual engineers, Alan Kleinhans and Doreen Rafferty. I also want to acknowledge all of the RCSC staff who are here this evening to assist us at the end of a very long day. And I want to thank the uh, staff here at Sundial for preparing the room for us yet again. Please, uh, please rise at this time and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We call for the quorum. <clears throat> Where's the script? Oh, here it is. <laughs> you get it, Doug. <laughs> Madam Secretary. I mean, do we have a quorum? No, Madam President, we do not have a quorum. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. For lack of a quorum, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Members wishing to address the uh, board this evening, uh, please remain in your seats while some of the others may be departing. Directors, I will uh, call you up to the front to participate in uh, taking comments from the direct from the uh, members. Please take your seats.
Okay. If I forget, you guys are to remind me, okay? <laughs> Sorry that we're a little further back than usual. Um, I'll once again welcome everybody this evening. Uh, we will, uh, since you're all here, if some of you would like to make comment to the board, the board is available to hear your comments. Uh, as we'll have the same usual three minute limitation and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get through the people who want to speak. Uh, please don't come a second time until everybody's had a first time to comment. Thank you. President Fast, may I ask a question in case these folks want to know? These motions die, is that correct? That, that is correct. There is no member meeting, membership meeting today. There wasn't enough people. I, ju I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that they're gone. If the, you want them up again, you would have to resubmit them. Yeah. Thank you. And the, oh, I probably should have done that. I'll do it at the end of the meeting. I'll tell you when the next member meeting is. I believe it's March 11th of 2025. But I'll go through that at the end of our time here today. Sir, state your name and your member number. Oh, my, my name's Ron Ensweiler, 134829. And my husband and I have lived in Sun City for about nine years, and we just think it's really nice. We're very happy to be here. However, when somebody buys a place and they pay a fee to the PIF, it's a set amount no matter the sales price of any home or condo or whatever they're, they're moving into. I think that's ridiculous. There's a house in our neighborhood and we do not live in a $600,000 neighborhood. But there's a house in the neighborhood that is listed for $640,000 and they will pay the same fee as someone who is buying a one bedroom, one bath condo. Is that not correct? I think that's ridiculous. It needs to be some kind of percent of something. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Now you go check with okay. Good evening. Hi, I'm Karen Main. I had placed a couple of motions on the board for this evening, and I understand that they were outside of the scope of uh, RCSC bylaws. And so, but I'm very much appreciative of being able to come and speak in front of you and my community members, um, because really may, what I was may hoping- May we ask you to give us your number? Of course. Yeah. Um, Karen Main, uh, 156706. I had to look at my notes. Thank you. Yes. Um, but I did just want to say a few words about an issue that we're having in phase one in my community, which I am getting more and more concerned about, um, which is why I submitted the motion um, seeking some help to create a task force of all of the smart people in the community from SHOA, the Posse, from your board, um, Maricopa County Sheriff, and also from the Condo Association. Um, and, and the reason I'm here tonight is because I did not realize after I purchased my condo in 2020 um, that I would be living next to a freeway. And I'm not talking about the Loop 101, I'm talking about a very short three mile stretch on 107th Avenue from Olive up to Mountain View. I have witnessed, and I'm here representing other neighbors as well, excessive speeding. Now this is a two lane street. I've witnessed cars <laughs> passing, passing slower moving traffic on 107th Avenue. 
I have witnessed inattentive drivers and I've seen aggressive drivers. I've been almost hit twice on my street Kelso while walking my dog. Now, as a pedestrian, I wondered, am I misjudging speeds? So our condo association reached out to the posse who did place a speed detection device on the southbound um, area of 107th Avenue. Um, that was December 7th through the 14th of last year. Over that time, over half of the drivers, 52%, exceeded the 30 mile per hour posted speed limit. The majority of drivers, what's known as the 85th percentile, were traveling at 37 miles per hour. You know, I'm not, I'm not so concerned about those. I'm concerned about the anomalies. The 6% of drivers in that week's period who drove over 40 miles per hour. In fact, there were 41 vehicles who were clocked at over 50 miles per hour. And the, the data just lists 50 to 999 miles per hour. Those are the drivers that as a pedestrian make you jump back. I'm aggravated, I'm frustrated, and frankly, I don't feel safe walking in my neighborhood, and that's not what I was bargaining for as a member of the community. And I'm wondering too, by a show of hands in the room, how many of the rest of us in the room are experiencing this in your neighborhood? Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of us, and there are many other neighborhoods. Hutton from Del Webb going over to the Bell Center, Alabama, all of those areas. So thank you very much. I do hope that we can get a task force together to really create a strategic plan to solve and address this problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam President, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me uh, make a comment because many of you may not know that there is something called the Sun City Leadership Coalition, and it's currently chaired by uh, Commander Davis over at the Posse, and it includes several members from different parts of SHOA. It includes the fire department. It includes MCSO. It includes the Prides. It includes uh, the RCSC. Um, so it's a, it's, we pretty well cover Sun City. And I just wanted people to know that's called the Sun City Leadership Coalition. So uh, that is available. Uh, that's how we impart information throughout the community. Yes, sir. If Am I up? Hold on. Just a moment, sir. Oh. <laughs> Secretary Titan. I should have butted in sooner. Uh, I am the liaison from this board to the SHOA. Sun City Homeowners Association. On the third Wednesday of every month, the Show of Roads and Safety Committee meet, open to the public. At those committee meetings, McDot is there, the Posse, the Prides, the Sheriff's Office. There may be others. This is where you bring your traffic concerns. It, takes a while, you chip away and chip away. I know the last time I was there, people brought up again the fact that, um, help me out here, is it 103 and uh, Alabama or one of them where the stop sign is in the middle of the road and people who are near here don't know whether they're supposed to go to the right or the left. They're aware of it, they've been aware of it, and all I can say is just persevere. It's at 10 a.m. Uh, oh, thank you, 10 a.m. on that Wednesday. It's the 20th of this month. Uh, SHOA also meets monthly. I'm the liaison for the SHOA meeting, and that too is open to the public each month. Sir, you wanted to comment? Yes, uh, the stop sign at Alabama the 103rd had been removed. In the, from the middle of the street, by the way. Uh, William Brewer, 152270. Uh, and I wanna give you guys kudos. I spoke to the exchange meeting about the AEDs in West in, uh, Mountain View. That I've got an email that's being addressed and successfully. So thank you very much for that. 
And I wasn't going to speak tonight when you said there was no motion, but since motion number two has been addressed, I'm going to address motion number three. I'm one of two residences that live by the parking lots on Peoria. It would greatly affect my peaceful enjoyment of my home. It would put, the only thing you could put there would be a structure, which would put a one lane street between me and a structure, block my view looking out my front window. I don't want it. I will oppose it with everything I have. And I, I take careful consideration of that. I've never been contacted about it and it, it was a surprise to me to look at that and I, I will oppose it 100% every way I can. I'm just, there's only two residences that that will affect and I'm one of them. And I've got just as much right as, every, as anyone else here to have peaceful enjoyment. Sir, along with, and they drive fast on Peoria too. That's okay, I'll let them drive fast as long as I can see out of my front door. Okay, thank just, you very just much. just want to let you know that that parking out in front of uh, Fairway is there because when you build a building, you have to have a certain number of parking lots based on the roof amount that you have. And that's why that parking lot is there and that, it'll stay there. Yeah, I, I, that's, I've been looking into that and I found that it's also made by Maricopa County, too, maintained by Maricopa County. Right, these, so. these medians are, belong to Maricopa County. Yeah, okay. And, uh, okay, thank you. That's, that's thank all you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Joanne Greeny, 106561. And I've not been to the last two uh, exchanges because it just hasn't worked. But I wanted to address the pending discussion on not being able to use cash or your punch cards. Um, most all of us buy a punch card and it might take one to two years before all your relatives come and you get to use them up. And it's kind of like having a forever stamp. You buy them in advance so you can save money in the future. And so, you know, I, I like the punch cards. It's, I'm sorry to hear that they're probably going to be going away. And I understand that now if I have a guest come in, I need to go with a credit card to pay for a day pass for my guest to put a $5 charge or a $7 charge on my credit card, which I'd really rather not do. I'd much rather pay with cash. Um, I did receive an email from, I believe, McCur uh, Mr. McCurdy, saying that, well, it's for the convenience of the employees. This way they don't have to balance a till at the end of the shift, or they don't have to deal with cash. And I just, personally, I feel as though it's dumbing down America if we can't comp back change for cash. Uh, also, I am wondering if bowling and golf is going to uh, have us pay strictly by credit card in the future. I would like to be able to, I would just like to know if that's going to be happening. Well, part of the process as well in, in going to an automated system is because there were a lot of abuses of the punch card system. And now, how can that be when the punch card has my name, when I bought it, and what my rec card number is, and I have 10 punches? How I, can that I, be I hear you. I hear you, and, but yet, it, yet it's so. Um, going to this automated system will also make it easier for the members. If I understood what Mr. Uh, DeLazansky said at the exchange meeting, uh, basically they're going to start to roll this out in April, and then they're going to provide for at least one year period to use the punch cards that you currently have, and then at the end of that time, any remaining balances will probably be applied to your account on that automated system. I can't really speak to the, can you go ahead? Sure. Um, yeah, thank you for your concern. And um, the, I want to address two things. One is how do abuses arise, and the second thing are what other options you have be besides a credit card. So the first thing is that um, the abuse of people who are near neighbors of Sun City are actually restricted by our bylaws to only being able to use our facilities 14 days a year. So what we don't want to have is somebody who lives in Peoria or Surprise that's using our facilities for $2.50 a day as though they were a member without having ever paid into PIF or SIF or all the other things that go along with that. 
And when we have a punch card, we know that you are the purchaser, but we don't know who those guests are. And we do have people who are using our facilities way more than 14 times a year. So there's no way for us to track that using, or it's a, it would be a very convoluted way of tracking that with a punch card system. <clears throat> when you do this online, you're actually able to track the name of the guest and what their address is so that you can determine whether they're within a 75 mile radius of Sun City or not. So this is not designed to prevent your grandchildren from Minnesota from being able to come and use the facilities more than 14 days of year, but um, that would just be an example of an abuse, okay? And I'll let you respond in just a second. But the, the other thing is that it's not, the credit card is not the only option that you have for paying here. Um, a debit card is a possibility, and apparently they're also investigating the, op the possibility of being able to put a certain amount of money into your your corporation account that then would be used each time you, whether it was golfing or bowling or a guest card or something else. So there are a few other options beyond just a credit card. So it's not a, not necessary that you have a credit card in order to be able to enjoy amenities that cost money here. And so if I wanted to uh, put $100 onto my uh, rec card and use that, but we can't use that for bowling. You can use it for golf. Um, so would I be able to give a $100 bill to somebody to put $100 on my rec card so I can use that? I don't know the answer to that question, Joanne. I'm sorry. I think that that is a question that our management team will be able to answer for you. I'm not sure what the options are. I think they said that they would accept a check, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, so, so there are a, a check or a debit card or a credit card, but there is an attempt. Yes, you are correct that no there is cash. an attempt to, to do away with cash payments. That's, that's really sad. So we could change our little logo. Mm -hmm. Your cash is not welcomed in Sun City. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Esther Albertus, 134690. I'm gonna to speak to the new system. I used it last weekend, it was awesome. I have my family visiting this week, and so I put my daughter, my son-in-law, and the three grandchildren on there. And uh, all they had to do was show them the, bar or the barcode. And they came right up, and we went swimming at Marionette one day, and, and John spent out doing mini golf with them and doing the boats today, and it's just made it a lot easier. And the other thing that I really appreciate about it is, I was always looking for those punch cards, like in my junk drawer in the kitchen. Oh, we got two left, you know? This way, I just pay for the week, and they have a great time. So I'm in favor of this technology for sure. Thank you. Thank you. So, could I, could I? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> Hello? Yeah, so thank you for that affirmation. I just do want to make sure that everybody realizes how that this option exists. So if you've always done punch cards and you're sort of allergic to doing an online thing, there is actually on, if you just log into your account, um, there is a button that says purchase a guest pass. And you can enter your information, you can pay online, and you do get actually a barcode. And you can send that barcode as a screenshot to any member of your party, which means that it it saves a lot of time. So right now I know up at Marinette, they've actually set up, a because it's spring break, they've set up a second table to try to diffuse these long lines of people that are coming with grandchildren to swim. And you can take care of all of that in the comfort of your home, and when you walk in, you just show the barcode and you can get in. So just want to make sure that everybody's available that that option exists. Karen, or excuse me. I'd also like to say that um, I, I think uh, will suggest to management and the communication department to have a one-page flyer or a, a pretty uh, good explanation so that uh, either come out in an email blast or somehow so that you'll have all the information you'll need to understand this new system. Yes. Hello, Carol Harrington. 
1-800-111-3970. I'd like to know what our numbers were tonight. How close did we come to a quorum? Not two. Our numbers were 197. I am worried that we will get back on the lonely path for membership mm -hmm. of 12 years in a row without having a membership meeting. If you're new here to Sun City, up until about, up until last year, I believe, we went 12 years without a membership meeting. So I don't know what we need to do, but I know that last year's membership meeting had a lot of problems. We were sitting while we were counting votes. We, I, just, I just don't know what we need to do, but we need to do something. The, the, that last year was the first go round. Mm -hmm. So we were, it was a learning experience as far as the balloting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we realized after that we probably could have continued the meeting while they were counting, counting. votes. Mm -hmm. But since it was the first time around, we did what we did. It's a learning experience. Lessons okay. learned. Yeah. One thing we could do, and um, I like to emphasize this in the communication mode again, since I'm the chair of the Outreach and Communications Committee, um, tell, communicate to your neighbors how important this meeting is. Even if there isn't anything on the agenda that strikes your fancy, it's important for you as a member of the community to take your responsibility seriously. It's your money that we're spending and you have a right to have a voice. The other thing is I'd like to see um, as new folks come on, when they go through the cardholder um, system when they come to get their cards that we try to give them is, I know we give them a, a packet and lots of information and your eyes sometimes will glaze over. I'm hoping maybe we can do some town halls or planning sessions or more events for specifically newcomers and right. then rely on the rest of you to tell everybody else. All right. Yeah. Um, do you have any ideas of what you think is going on or is it just good old fashioned apathy? Yep. And, and people feeling like coming is just a waste of time, that nothing happens anyway. You know, if I could so, just make a comment on that. Uh, Director Fess? Yeah, if I could just make a comment on that uh, to my, uh, my director, uh, Totten's uh, uh, credit, um, she's tackling this head on uh, with a new committee. And it's not just about communication, but correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's about engaging the community. Outreach. And so it, it, it really is something that struck uh, a chord with my fellow director here. And uh, she has been. Uh, I want to say relentless uh, in pursuing it. Good. I'm, we knew she would. That's one of the reasons she was elected. Yeah, I think so. And Director Ruff, yeah. did you have a comment? I was going to say, in, um, from my l very limited experience, unless there's an issue that's fairly broad, then not. People don't come out because they're not upset about anything. You, they don't come, they don't usually come to sing praises. They come to say, we didn't like this, or we don't like that. And you know, if you're happy, you're gonna say, oh, I can stay home, I don't need to go to that. But it's, last year was the first time we knew we were gonna hit 600, and we did, and we needed 500, so that was really good. I would, if you had asked me to guess tonight, I would have said there'd be 199 people here and there was 197. Because there's not an issue before us that a lot of people need to come. If you look at the attendance at board meetings, 
the last board meeting, there were 62 people there. Now, a lot of people watch the audio video right, the video. Uh, online, mm -hmm. but there's not that many people there. Right. And the majority of people that come to speak are the same ones that were there the month right. before and the month right. before. I just have one more comment, and I think I have at least a minute left. <laughs> um, I'd like to address Director Kai's and the uh, agenda items that were passed by the board regarding golf, such as no dress code, no limitations on pedestrians on the course. Um, I don't have them memorized, but I guess the question I have for you, Director Kais, is were you trying to force Brian Duthu into a position where he had to be? Because it w all of your stuff was at the, how did you put it? At the direction of the Golf director. Advisory Committee. Oh, I thought it said Director of Golf. All the, what I, what I did was, there were a lot of small um, things in the, in the board policy that, in my opinion, and the opinion of the Golf Advisory Committee, should have been the purview of the Director of Golf, instead of being at the purview of the, the board. And there was a good example of a gentleman who had a, mobility limitation um, and he was not able to play golf because there were more than three carts in his group and the other people wouldn't give up their carts. Um, the director of golf, his hands were tied in this manner because the board policy says you can only have three. So this gentleman had problems with this. This gives the, Getting rid of these as a board policy he puts them into the purview of the director of golf, gives him the ability to make these decisions and on the fly where his hands aren't tied, and we didn't want him to do that. I understand. The only thing is, I'm so disappointed that we don't have a dress code for our it, golf courses in Sun City. It's, I not, mean, it's not that we don't have a, 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 a dress code, ma'am. It's the dress code is the director of golf's responsibility to let people know about it. It doesn't change. The dress code is still there. It's just not a board policy. It's a director of golf policy. So the sign in the golf shop. Yes. Is supposed to do the work. Okay. Well, but ma'am, ma the, other, the other recourse is all, all that information was on board policy 17, and you would never know about it unless you got onto the RCSC website, found our directives, found the board policy. Otherwise, there was no way of knowing it, aside from what's on the golf courses anyhow. So none of that has changed from what's before. Okay. Okay. Did someone else have? No, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Walter Capps. I actually have two numbers tonight. I'm number 198 because I didn't have my card. But my rec card number is 147697. So I have a point of interest. Great technology using the punch card system going online. Why is it I can't go to a meeting like tonight that's very important? Because honestly, I don't know where my card is, but I know where my fob is because it's on my keys. So I got here. Why can't I scan this and my picture show up? Says, oh, that's Walter Capps. Come on in, participate. Just a thought. Maybe that's why 200 and, or 301 didn't show up because they don't have their card. They know they can't get in. The, but, you know, uh, adoption of technology it, it takes time. And oh, I understand that. I work in. I worked in that. Okay. Yeah. I so, and, and, and you probably it's just understand. A point of interest. Uh, yeah, you probably understand that RCSC has neglected. Uh, oh, sure. Technology for years. Oh, I get it. And hopefully we'll get there. Okay. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. There, there may be another reason in the near future as we tighten up our security uh, fobs, little fobs that are attached to the back of your card for right. access to certain areas will be used. Great. Those small fobs will not fit on the key fob. Oh, you're right. Great. Okay, just a point. I just yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Mm -hmm. Hi, Sandy Pasek, 119-180. And the way I see a solution to involve everybody for the meeting is whoever shows up, we have an annual meeting and we make the decisions. So it'd be a bylaw change. And everybody at home could participate by a Zoom meeting. I don't know if there's any limit, but we got the technology, right? But I do object to the Super Bowl at the next gen. I came with food. <laughs> I was willing to pay to get in and they wouldn't let me in unless I had uh, registered online in advance. And I, you know, I think I should be able to pay there, but their argument is we don't want to do the paperwork or whatever, and we're going to be an example for the rest of all the clubs. And I think we should be a little bit more flexible than that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening, board members. Uh, Ron Pasek, 119-179. And uh, I'm coming with good news about the softball field. There's great progress on the clubhouse. Batting cage is going in and it looks like everything's on time and I appreciate uh, your efforts in supporting us at the softball field. And we just fixed the uh, infield up and uh, we had a couple of good rainstorms and we were able to play the next day. When we had a rainstorm, it's been like two to three days before the field would dry off and uh, now the drainage system works and, and uh, everything looks good down there. So I wanna say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you Ron, Ron, you, you have two and a half more minutes to compliment us. You have two and a half more minutes to compliment us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Can I take his two minutes, uh, his rest, to, to compliment? No, actually, I, I came up from after Ron. Dave Clausen, 154961. Um, I came up after Ron because I wanted to say, step by step, day by day, a little bit better in every way. And, and the softball is, is going in. I was playing pickleball. I, I say pickleball every time I go to Mountain View because of the Mountain View project and it's stuck in my head. <laughs> tennis. I was playing tennis at drop-in this morning at, at uh, Mountain View. I saw lawn bowlers like I've seen every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday there. And what I saw today was another step by step. There were workers out there on the mini golf, cleaning up, blowing up. It looks like they're ready to put in the, uh, the grass. So that is awesome. So. Uh, did you find your stuff? I did not find the, okay. I, I actually didn't have a chance. I'm looking for the elements. Right. I'm still looking for where the elements are. And, and there may be two versions of the elements and I would really love to know exactly what date, what, what day and what, document that is. They, uh, Dave, yes. they're also published under the news section. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's hard to find, but if you go under uh, Sun City News, you'll see the, see the element. Yeah, if you go to the website, if you go to the website, look for news, scroll down, they're published there with elements. I, don't, I can't remember what okay. the rest of the title is, but they're on there. John's so, exactly right. So this is a list of the elements? Yeah. Is that, Connie? Yes, mm -hmm. and the, well, front part two, of that, the four, front page six, of that is the, kind of a description of what steps need to happen. The elements okay, are in so there are, there are four pages here. Mm -hmm. Three okay. pages are elements. Three pages right. are elements, the other ones are other. Awesome, pages. thank you very much. Um, a minute left. You can have another minute on top. I tell you what, no, no, that's fine. This is perfect. Uh, I do think that this community is wonderful. I just love this place. <laughs> I didn't think I spoke that loud, <laughs> but it really is a wonderful place and uh, good people, good people everywhere. And so I, uh, I, I see good progress. I do hope and expect that there will be uh, real uh, RFPs that are clear to the, to the uh, design architects, both at Mountain View and at uh, Lakeview, so that we know exactly, well, exactly is never 
the right word, but we know that it's reasonable and structurally sound to renovate the auditorium because in my mind still, the proposal M was the vote of the majority of people that I talked to uh, and the people in the SAC committee. And I would love to see that there. If it's at Lakeview, then I have an idea of building a, a rooftop four tennis courts on top of that building. <laughs> Think it's crazy, but there are lots of tennis courts and pickleball courts on top of buildings in cities. So if, if you really wanted to see something exciting, uh, YouTube um, Dubai tennis court, and you'll see this 600 foot up tennis court uh, on, in Dubai. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> I wanted to thank you for your time. Um, my name is Deborah Benson. My number is 154065. And over the weekend, the Vintage Vehicles of Sun City had a car show at Sun Bowl. And it was a wonderful event, and we did very well, and everybody enjoyed themselves. But there was a huge beehive in one of the um, palm trees, and there was a few people that did get stung. We had um, first aid there and had everybody checked out. I do not know if it has gotten to anybody from our CSE that can take care of this, because I know softball is gonna be there, concerts are there, and I think it's very important that this gets, these bees get moved. So Where, thank you for your you. time. Where was it? It was on... Was it in the Sun Bowl area or the, base, the softball area? It was on that back softball area. Back Near the reservoir? Right. Okay. Right. I Before the so. retention pond. Retention pond. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So. I, can, I can point it out. Okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. Ma'am? Ma'am? Uh, Connie, as uh, your chair of the properties, did yes, you say? Yes, We just inspected Sun Bowl last this past week. But I was going to say, could you tell the audience what they should do if they find something like that? Okay, you know, we're com comic, com yeah, me personally. Well, beside run. I'm I mean, <laughs> you, no, yeah, run, but you've got your com comment cards is one thing. It's If it's a safety issue, I mean, if you can alert a person, uh, a personnel, our CSC personnel. Okay, then that should start an escalation process, I just but fo to make sure it did. follow up with comment cards as well, because if it's a safety issue, that takes top priority. You know, obviously we want to make sure that our members are safe. So that, that I look right at Stephanie and I know that she, that lady waving her hand, she is awesome and her team will kick butt and take names. Okay. So, so, she, so, so if you see something, first of all, say something to an employee if one is there. Okay, point it out to them, tell them what, you know, if somebody's been hurt, let them know they may need to write up an incident report because we need to keep track of that in case something happens where somebody gets sicker, okay? So don't forget that part. And then follow up with a comment card, okay? So then that information feeds down to the properties committee. We have the most wonderful volunteer inspectors that you could possibly imagine. I got a chance to follow four of them this week me last week, they were phenomenal. Um, and they really do a good job checking everything they're assigned to do and they also listen to what the staff has noticed or mentioned or if they're in a club area, what the club has mentioned. So, but it takes knowing what's happening in order for the food chain to work, okay? Right, we did let the maintenance people Wonderful. know about the incident also. Good. Thanks. And, and just as another note, speaking of comment cards, some of you, may have it had a kind of a rough experience in the past with comment cards that you you put them in and didn't feel that they were addressed. Um, I am not sure of the date, uh, my president maybe, uh, but we are going to be implementing a new comment card system that I believe is electronic. An automated system, yes. Yes, automated. So. Fill You'll those. be able to track your comment cards right. through right. the system. I want to make one, one more comment, if I've got to speak. Okay, when you fill out a comment card, the card has more weight if you put your name on it. 
The card has no weight if you swear, if you call people out, if you're rude, okay? We're, we're all adults. Be an adult when you're filling out a comment card. You can be upset politely. I mean, come on, we haven't gotten past that point, have we? We're all adults, fill out the comment card politely. We're, you know, um, you're like a soap dispenser at Oakmont in the ladies' restroom. It took three months. But politely filling out comment cards, we got it done. <laughs> okay, thank you. President Fimmel. Uh, if, yes, if, Director Tice. If, if people can't get a hold of, if people can't get a hold of somebody on the staff when they notice something especially safety related, they could just call into the corporate offices and start the chain rolling, the ball Absolutely. rolling that way. Yeah. I'm Constance Sherman, 127101, and I would like to maybe give you an idea of how to note, get people notified that there is going to be a members meeting, an annual one. I would like to see you as a board, the three months before that period, like start in January, at the end of your meeting when there's comments, announcements, something like that, let's start mentioning it there <laughs> for three months ahead of time. Connie, I've been mentioning it. For have months. you? Good. I have. I haven't yes. watched all the videos, but some yes. of them. Another way, too, would be for the club's office, the golf office, all of those. They know who the chairmen are, the committee people. They have email lists of everybody. I know the club's office can email all the presidents at once. And maybe let them know. I know they get a president's packet, but that might be too late. So that would be a way to maybe let people know that there's going to be a member meeting and they could post it on their board or announce it in their meetings. Okay. So anyway, that's just my thought. But Connie, Thank you. Uh, Connie, that, that it's, in the, it's been in the weekly news I know. Um, blast. I, I know. mean, but I know that a lot of people don't read that, but that's right. almost as good as the newspaper that we get yeah. monthly. So yeah. just take the time to read it. It yeah. tells you what all's happening and when it's happening and where it's happening at. It does. Yeah. It does. But sometimes if they hear it from their club president, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe yeah. they would pay more attention. I don't know. Connie, thank you for those suggestions. Well. They're good. I yes. do what I can do. Okay. Thank you. And I want to thank you all for what you're doing. I know it's not an easy job really? at all. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Milt Lepsack, 130662. Um, I'll just keep my comments regarding the annual meeting. And um, I, I agree with some of the other people that maybe more advertising, more uh, information could be made available. Uh, I think a lot of people don't know that it's happening, regardless of how it's been published. Uh, but my suggestion that, what, that I think would attract a lot more people to an annual meeting would be to establish a voting system similar to voting for board members with proposals that particularly relate to financial issues. That would bring people out. If it refers to PIF fees, recreation fees, um, construction projects, that would get people's attention and have them vote on it. it ha I recognize it would have to be an advisory vote. Uh, it, it wouldn't be incumbent on the board to accept it, but at least you'd get a, I think you'd get a much better opinion of, of what people actually think of particularly of financial issues, because in my opinion, that's what gets people's attention. Well, may I? Thank you. May I? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, the, um, many of the motions for the membership meeting come from the members. And so if, you know, if the members were, were to make those motions, um, those would be published in advance of the meeting. And uh, so it, I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, and I don't want to just turn it around on to you. But um, if those motions are made, then I think it, you, I agree with you. It would get more attention. Um, I'd, I'd just like to comment, and, and I appreciate all the efforts that you're making, and I know they're all good faith efforts. Um, I think the process to actually submit a, uh, a motion uh, could be made much easier, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly with major issues and, in my opinion, financial issues, because that's what draws 
uh, the opinions. Uh, that's what would be of most interest to the residents, I believe. Mel, can I ask you a couple of questions? Yes. I mean, you say it should be easier. It's the members meeting and all the motions come from the members. I understand that. And but so when it's time for the motions to be made for the members meeting, you make the motions. I'm not quite sure uh, I, I don't think the general population is aware of the process. Yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying and I'm wondering if this is a f idea right off the top of my head, but if you had a particular motion that you were interested in or a matter that you would enlist the aid of a staff member to help you write your motion. I, I agree, that would be, would, is that that would be very helpful suggestion. That would, yeah. I, I'm not, you know, we'd have to discuss that with management. I'm not sure that's actually something that's appropriate, but we certainly could talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'd just like to add that uh, beyond the annual membership meeting, this year we're going to have a very significantly more interactive budget process than we've had uh, in previous years. So management was actually tasked with coming up with a calendar of what would be happening at which stage as far as the budget is concerned, and realizing that in order to be able to have a budget passed by the end of the year, what has to happen in May, what has to happen in June, what happens in July, in order for the members to have an adequate lead time to understand the budget proposal before it comes to the board for a vote. That has not historically happened, and I think that's been a big mistake, and I think this year um, that should be very, very different, so keep your eyes open. There will be um, information that will be coming after the summer meltdown, uh, so probably starting in early September, I think that there should be some information coming out that will be um, giving membership a lot more insight into um, the budget process. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just want to make, I'm trying to be as positive as possible, but uh, the only other comment I'd like to make is that the, the last year's annual meeting soured a whole lot of people on the process, and that's why you don't have people here now, because nothing was really accomplished at the last annual meeting, and uh, I think people just thought it was a total waste of time, uh, primarily because of that. I see. We'll Thank you. Yes. And I, I do appreciate your efforts, and I understand you're, you're trying to, to do the right thing. Thank Les you. Lessons Michael. learned. And, and speaking of September, uh, Vice President McAdam, uh, when do we officially start asking for uh, people who might be interested in running for the board? Um, so there <laughs> will, in early June, there will be the first <clears throat> um, candidate information session, and this will be publicized so that anybody who is interested in potentially running for the board will be invited to come and there will be a forum discussion. So this year, it used to be that we always did two in June, this year we're doing one in June and one in early September. Um, to try to give folks who maybe are deciding a little bit later to run an opportunity to have one of those sessions um, in the fall if they've been traveling during the summer months. So well, I, I that, appreciate that, that. Will be, <laughs> that will be published uh, in in the very near future. I don't, I didn't bring my dates no, with me, so I can't tell you today. I got the dates. No. Okay. The dates. Since, since I'm not a year-round yeah. resident, I would be happy to talk to any candidate who wants to run who is eligible and uh, offer my thoughts to them. Thank you. Okay, okay. so thank you. So candidate dates. The first um, first candidate, far as deciding if you want to run, is uh, Tuesday, June fourth. Well, okay, hang on a second. And then we said September. That'll be here before you know it. And that, and then the September date is Tuesday, September tenth. So if you're interested in running, put those dates in your calendar. Or if you just want to mull it over and talk to one of us, please do. 
Well, I encourage anyone who's eligible, uh, give it some <laughs> thought. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. I just want to clarify on that. Those are informational sessions. Yes. They're not requirements for being able to run for the board. It's just something that we offer to help people have their, an their questions answered. The hard deadline is the first Friday in October is when a candidate packet has to be submitted with the requisite 100 signatures and other items that go into that packet. Okay, thank you. I've taken enough time, thank you. Thank you. I'm Don Helmer, 122951. And uh, my wife and I arrived here about 12 years ago. And as not young people, but we've definitely gotten older. <laughs> and we came here as full time and all full time when we got here. We're not snowbirds and it's been 12 years now. And the summertime is especially important to us or to me more as far as the, the uh, walking pool at Bell and the spa at Bell. And I, I'm just flabbergasted sometime as to how long it takes to fix equipment around here. It was a just in time process of has been recognized for a number of years now. And I can't believe that these spas and all that, when they break down, that it isn't usually a lot of the same thing that's breaking down. And I just cannot imagine why it should take so long to fix something. And uh, I'd sure like to see that. I, sometime I tell you what, as a full-time employee, I almost feel a little bit like a second-class citizen. You snowbirds run out of town, and by God, <laughs> next thing you know, my spa don't work, and nobody fixes it, you know? So, you know, I, I'm just, but anyway, I, I just wish you could fix the equipment a little quicker. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Hello, good evening. Thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Margaret Varsh. Uh, my number is 9545, note four digits. We came here 25 years ago with snowbirds and we're still here. But, <laughs> still here. Uh, but may I make a suggestion as to the number of people who aren't here? Uh, you said that we could not vote on any motions because we're not enough. Well, I didn't know what motions we're going to vote on. I have never seen a lift, a printout, or anything else, so what are we voting on tonight? Could you now, tonight, right now, run this down the list, one to 19 or whatever it was, what we missed voting on? And if that were published next time, we're going to have a general meeting, may I suggest that you publish in advance, come out and vote, these are the motions we're talking about. Yes, ma'am. We, we do make all of this known well in advance. And um, where? Uh, Margaret, do you get the independent thrown in your driveway? Yes. Okay. Do you get the email blast sent out by RCSE? I believe so. Every Not that I sort all through it, but I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you um, have a computer and can go onto the website? I could. Okay. Um, what am I missing? The Sun Sun copy. City update, the paper Formerly that's the available. Sun views. I'm sorry. Formerly the Sun Views. Yes, the Sun Views. Yes. If that were published in the Sun Views, it's all in every rec center. That I can figure out pretty easily. I can still read. Mm -hmm. If you had it in a list somewhere, we're going to vote on these nine proposed motions. Do come out on the 11th, 12th of March and have your vote. I, I understand what you're saying. I believe we give you the information and we tell you the date mm -hmm. and the time and we tell you where to go to look at the agenda. But you're saying if it was actually in the newspaper, yes, exactly. that would be better. It's, it's a timing issue. I don't think get into this paper. Yes, it's, it's well, wherever issue. these motions are proposed all over the next 12 months, Perhaps you could make us aware of what we would like to come and vote on. 
and also tell me the exact number that we need in a quorum. We had it last year, but I understood last year we also had some proxies. Now, yes. since this is a corporation, and every other corporation in America that has a meeting allows their people to vote by proxy if they wish. We do. That's correct. We do. We allow proxy votes. And the, and the quorum number is 500. Uh, Vice President McAdam, did you want to comment? Yeah, I, this would, it would be interesting to me to just see, for those of you who are still here, how many of you were aware of what the agenda was for today? About half. Okay. So about oh, half, because we do, so we, we have a schedule of when the motions have to be submitted so that they can be published okay. ten, 10 days in advance of the meeting, and we use all of the, the options that are at our disposal to publish those, so, uh, but it's telling to me that only half of you knew what the agenda items were, yeah. Since only half of us know what the agenda could have been, could you please repeat it for us tonight? There's now. There's a copy of it on the back table. There's, yes, it, there, you can pick it up. There's copy copies on, the on all those little card tables back there. There's a copy of the minutes oh. from the previous meeting and the agenda with the current oh, items on it. Oh, I came in early. Maybe they weren't out. I didn't see yeah, it at they all. Were. So they were there at 4 o'clock. <laughs> I got here at 4. I thought there'd be a thousand here, so I came early to park. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but I didn't see this at all okay. on the table. <laughs> no, nobody pointed it out to me. Oh, look, there's some papers over yeah. there for you. So one of the reasons that we have a an advanced requirement for submitting motions is that it, for people to, to, to collect proxies, they have an option of asking for a general proxy or for a specific proxy. So people have to know what the motions are in order yes. to go out and collect proxies. So there, there is a calendar for when the motions have to be submitted, when it has to be published, and then when the proxies have to be returned so they can be validated right. before the meeting. All I saw when in the sun views was the date of, don't miss your AGM, mark it now, mark your calendar. I saw that. that was big print, but I didn't see anything else about what was going on. I thought you would tell us when we sat down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you can exactly. see, as you can see, communication in Sun City needs some work. But it's interesting that only half of you saw the agenda. I don't know how we can solve that. Please, if you've got some solutions, either come to my meetings or email me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sorry. President Kat. Director Rickman. Okay, so I have some neighbors that get the email blasts that we get weekly. They don't look at them. So, if the information is there, it, okay, and I'm not trying to sound rude, I tend to be like black and white in a lot of cases. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. We can send you the, the email blast, but it takes you opening it up and reading it and going, oh, also. Okay, so we're, we're the, we have wonderful communication team. We have um, been making some changes. We've got Jean and her great committee. We're, we're, we're not perfect, but we do give you a lot of notice. I mean, these, the meeting, the, this meeting's been noticed for at least three months. Actually, I think we started notice in November when the last meeting was to let you know, mark your calendar. Correct. So just keep that in mind, people. And we'll start this evening by letting people know when the next meeting, membership meeting is, which I told you is March 11th of 2025. And I'll mention that in each monthly meeting from now until the end of the year. I'll also mention to you now, since people are leaving, that uh, the next board meeting is on March 28th, and the next exchange is on April 8th. What time? Uh, they're at 9 a.m. The exchange and the board meeting are at 9 a.m. here at Sundial. The uh, uh, membership meeting will be again at 6 p.m. here at Sundial. Did she have something she wanted to say? No, oh, I'm sorry. Is there a question? Come to the microphone if you have. A you, you can come back. We we're not adjourning. No, no, no. no you you can stay. We will eventually adjourn. We, we don't like to stay much Let's longer. Let's do than brainstorming. Yeah. Eight o'clock. We we hope to get home by then. Thank you, Tessa McRae.
114345, and I'm a snowbird, so I want to thank you for what you do. We've been here since 2010, and I think part of the problem here is that snowbirds maybe feel just a tad undervalued, and I think I'm, I think snowbirds make up 40 or 50 percent of your population. And I think in most organizations, when you have a large majority, say for instance schools or universities, students, you have one or two students on your board. I would suggest to you that to get more people involved and more people at your meetings that you perhaps consider a task force or talking about having a snowbird or two on your board. Uh, Ma'am? Ma'am? Uh, I uh, inquired into that question and um, received advice that uh, snowbirds are not eligible to be on the board by our, our bylaws, but I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. What about a change to your bylaws? I agree with you 100%. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. The name is Roberto Daniel Garcia, and if you can't pronounce that or you can't roll the R, just call me Bob, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Robert. Bob, can we have your number? Huh? One, three, eight, two, three, six. Thank I'm you. a little slow because I had a, str uh, not a migraine, a uh, stroke on my right side of the brain in 2000, so I'm going a little slow here. So, do we get uh, double time since we're slow? <laughs> no, I just like to recognize the board. Every organization is really successful when they have a good volunteer system. I worked for the Department of Recreation and Parks, City of Los Angeles, for 40 years in supervision, so I know what recreation's all about. And when people complain about paying their recreation, you know, annual annual assessment assessment, and I tell them you're out of your mind. He says, "This is a steal. It's a steal. It sure is. Multi." The, the facilities, multi-million dollar facilities, and their upkeep, you know, naturally it, it takes a lot of work to do it, and things break down, and then so working with the city for 40 years, I know things break down. And I just like to say, you guys are doing a wonderful job, and you're volunteers, and keep it up, and that's the heart of the organization. And I'd like to recognize everybody that's here tonight, and too bad we didn't get our quorum, but I'd like to say that we need to go out into the community as volunteers and address every 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 house and tell them how important these meetings are. We're not going to get anything done right. unless we have the people here. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, now with my real concern, Mr. Clausen came over there about a while ago, and he's a personal friend of mine. He says, two-story tennis courts, okay? I taught tennis for recreation for over 30 years, okay? And I know how important it is, and I told him I love tennis. But once I had that stroke, uh, forget it, you know. It was gone. It was gone. And I have this to prove. But um, I... I, I, I I was uh, at the Lakeview just to see the facility after it was completed and the lake in progress and how many people are using it. And uh, I look, I said, I wonder how our waterfall is doing over that beautiful rock area over there. It's coming. And it was dry. It's and I coming. said, It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. <laughs> new pumps. It new needs pumps. a new pump. What's that? It needs a new pump. A, co a, a, pump, a pump. Oh, I know. Hey, hey, I don't, even though I'm with a stroke and I'm a handicap, I'm ahead of time. I said, you know what? I know this is part of the contract, the lake and the plumbing system and the electrical with that waterfall. But do they have a timetable as far as what, when is it going to be working again? Because it's really beautiful. You know, aesthetically, you know, with the rest of the, the area there, it makes it wonderful. Incidentally, I'm a snowbird. Uh, no, I'm not a snowbird, okay? I'm a sunbird, okay? And I can prove it. I got the tan, okay? I got the tan. <laughs> P 
people have asked me, hey, Bob, he says, how do you have such a beautiful tan? And I tell them, I go three times to the tanning salon on a weekly basis, okay? And that's what I do. And if you believe that, I'll sell you the Brooklyn Bridge, okay? So you may not play tennis, <laughs> but you are a stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, once again, I appreciate you as a volu you know, volunteer organization. And we do. Oh, one concern I had. Let's see. I live on Thunderbird and Emberwood on the corner. Okay, so we get all of that traffic going through there. And we know how to time it, you know, when it gets slower. And it says, oh, everybody's home now. So it gets slower. But we do have speeders. We do have speeders. And we went to, you know, uh, sure, well. the, the proper sources and spoke to them and everything else to look at it, you know, because that's a thoroughfare, you know, that the Thunderbird. Yes. Boy, they, they raced through there. And we know. But uh, let's see. What else? Oh, yes. The tennis courts. No, no, no two-story tennis courts. But I, this might be a rumor, but I was speaking to the worker at the office, and she said they are going to be eliminating the tennis courts, and they're going to be making an entertainment center. An inter when is that going to go into effect? Is this a rumor or what? An entertainment center replacing the tennis courts at Lakeview. That's what I would like to know. We don't know yet exactly where the performing arts center will be. Some of might be at Lakeview, might be at Mountain View. We yeah. passed the second motion to have management hire an architect engineer to design the new Mountain View project, and the performing arts center is within that project. So it will be some time before the architect engineer is hired yeah, I and know. before it, the design is developed. I know it takes a, lo a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to process the whole thing and have it approved and everything and board. But uh, it was a, a concern of mine, and even though I don't play tennis, but my grandkids play tennis, and my great-grandkids play tennis too. I'm 86, but anyway, uh, I'm still plugging along, and I came to Sun City, and my daughter was here for 30 years, and she said, Bob, Bob, she calls me dad, anyway, she says, oh, you should come to Sun City, you love it over here. If we would have known how much fun we were going to have, we would have come 10 years earlier. Right. You know, it was, it's really an amazing place, and we really love it. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you, Roberto. Just a side note to everybody, what they mentioned at the Shoah meeting is that the they're, they find that the worst offenders for speeding are the people themselves who live in Sun City. Yep, Sun City. Our own members. Uh, greetings to the board. Thank you for serving. Uh, when the lady came up with a four-digit number, I just had to step up. Uh, my wife, late wife, and I came here at Christmas of 96. Sir, and sir, uh, my sir, number sir, is 51355. There you go. Thank my name you. is Gary Greer, G-R-E-E-R. -E -E Thank you. Um, the Sun City has proven to be the best investment ever. I worked for a while, um, volunteered for a while, at the visitor center. And I got to tell people virtually all over the world what a great place this is. Uh, I thank you for serving, and you're doing an exemplary job uh, that not, most of us uh, probably don't want to do. But I thank you for serving and for the action. I think we're in good hands, so I, I commend you. Oh, one, I found out one thing, though, a little piece of wisdom. After a brief survey of 27 years, I've come to the agreement that at least it takes at least two seniors to complete one thought. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm Joyce Stoffers, number 105183. And I just wanted to talk about uh, the activities that we have here. We have plenty of clubs, we have shows to go to, but I don't see that we have things that, um, that f would fit people that don't fall into any of those categories. If you don't want to go to a gang concert and you don't want to join up with a special club, where are the activities for those of us that are not club uh, joiners? So I thought since we have an activities director, it might be nice if they could explore the possibility of having things um, like intramurals, uh, where when it's 
hot in the summertime, you can roll out some indoor mats and have indoor mini golf. We could have uh, a game day where you could set up some games and have people mingle and, and do things along those orders without having to be a member of a domino club and a mahjong club and a monopoly club and a chess club and only do it between the hours of two to four on a Thursday, the third week of the month. Um, something that's just open for everybody to participate um, on a more spontaneous basis. And it doesn't require a whole lot of planning. They do it on cruise ships all the time. They have bingo one afternoon. You don't have to just go when the men's club has a bingo game. So I just thought something like that would be really nice to explore. And especially during the summertime when some of the clubs, like the Mac Club, pretty much closes down for the summer. A lot of them have limited numbers. Have the social director maybe to look into some uh, creative programming for us all, not tied to club membership, but just because we have rec cards and uh, would like to get together for things. Things like folk dancing, uh, afternoon craft, time where you just bring your project and sit down with other people, snack time, uh, cooking demonstration. There are plenty of possibilities, I think. Uh, people that used to be here talked about uh, community potlucks. It was arranged according to states. You could meet people from your state. Community building, I think, would be really positive and might get more people to the annual meeting, too, if they felt that they had ownership in smaller groups. You join a bigger group, then, and you don't necessarily have to be a club officer or fork over money for an additional club. I think these are all uh, possibilities that should be explored. Even something simple, like we have films, hang out after the film and discuss the film, meet some other people. It doesn't require a whole lot of extra work for anybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Joyce. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> Uh, one five two two seven four. Uh, I just want to say you guys are doing a great job. I, I, but something I I've promoted for you, or for me, and for everybody here, I tell people there's an annual meeting. I tell them about the member exchange meeting, and they, sorry, but I get the same thing. They don't want to deal with the board. You've got a a bad legacy. Not now. Because I've, I've talked to you guys, you know, and I know you're for real. But in the past, it's been, it's been some bad boards. And, and I, I wonder, I just wonder if it would help any, if you folks would wear a name badge and get out among everybody. I, I've only been here four years, and in that amount of time, I've only actually addressed one person that I can remember off, a board, off this board outside of a board meeting. And I wonder, you and the directors of all the golf and all that, put a badge on once in a while and get out, just and go where you're outside your area and talk to us and visit with the people here uh, and let them know that you care. I think the biggest thing is, these are, you're just gonna do what you're gonna do and we don't have anything about it to say about it anyway. It's kind of the impression I get talking to people. I think, like you mentioned, you know, you can lead a horse to water. How about we all try being the lead rope? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to read my card because I don't know my number. I'm Robin Clausen, 154905. Um, let me say that um, I, this is the first meeting I've attended because I work. But when Dave comes home, he sometimes is a little bit frustrated, but he always, always, always expresses his respect for everything that you all do. That is not something he just says here. He says it to me, he says it among the community, and he believes it and he means it. Um, let me now say <laughs> that when he talked about the tennis courts on top of a pack at Lakeview, there were a few chuckles, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> just like I just heard now. I would hope that that would go beyond a few chuckles. If by chance that's where the pack is gonna go and those tennis courts are going to be gone, why can't they be on a flat roof? 
rooftop units. HVAC equipment. Exhaust, okay. Exhaust fans. Are there, is there room to do it all? Can it be explored? It can be explored. It can be explored, but you have to consider it. Okay. I, that I, was, I, my background is in you. HVAC. Thank you. Um, something no, like that would involve a structural in different areas, mm -hmm. additional ductwork, mm -hmm. a lot of additional cost. You'd also have to have certain high parapets would need to be minimum code requirements, 48 inches. They probably would need to be 60. You're not, I mean. I, I appreciate but, yes. all of that. I've, I've, I've had family members in construction and commercial construction, and I get all of that. But I'm just asking that it go beyond the chuckles and it be looked at a little bit more seriously and considered and maybe figured in if it's a possibility and if it's fiscal and fiscally sound. And um, ultimately, we want to save a few tennis courts and, and have them in a few locations. And um, at, I would hope that some of his suggestions, because they're good, and he puts a lot of effort into them, and some of them are harebrained. I'll be the first one to admit <laughs> it, okay? But if you can sort through that, and you can stop for a minute and think, well, maybe. And that's all I ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. And thank you very much. Uh, one thing I would like to say is that uh, I know Dave from tennis, and he has just done a marvelous job as president of the tennis club and reinvigorating it and bringing ideas to the table. So, you know, there is, there's no such thing as a bad idea. Right. And, yeah. and I would just like to say that I have been saying that since the SAC. My presentation that I gave at the SAC meetings was called out of the box thinking because the, the more you throw out there and you talk, you never know what you're going to come up with. And, and ma'am, if you could help us, when you think Dave has something harebrained, <laughs> just email us so that we can help sort that out. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> okay. <coughs> this is Hi, my name is Betty Colosi, 145721. And I just wanted to make a, a comment on the Sun Bowl concerts. I've been to the couple that have occurred. Um, I left early for this, from this last one, only because it just wasn't my type of music. However, I have noticed that Teresa's no longer here, and there's another gentleman that's taking her place, at least for the Sun Bowl concerts. He introduced himself as a non-golf leader, um, but what was missing was um, the pre-announcements about the smoking, and about that we wouldn't have people coming from outside in, yeah. okay? And when I left the concert early, um, I walked up the ramp to go over into the parking lot, and there were several people smoking, sitting in chairs up in the back of the thing there. And then I passed friends that I know from Sun City West, now they were sitting over ways. Next time I see him, I'm gonna say, how did you get in, you know? So I just think that he needs to add that touch that Teresa had. Mm -hmm. um, hers was a, a tape of some kind that she played and said we, we would not recognize people. We don't want people from outside of Sun City. And if you're gonna smoke, smoke across the street. That, and you're probably aware of what she said. Right. That piece was missing. And it would make it a little bit more beneficial for all of us thank if he you, added you. that. Thank you for letting the, us know. The snow, the sun bowl and is one of the hardest places, to, I would think, I'm guessing, to monitor. Um, they have people standing asking to see your card. But um, it's so easy to slip in, you know, without having someone check it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure of that. Right. But I think it, it's at least helpful if an announcement is made. Yes. You know, um, I've been at the Sundial concerts before, not this year, but last year, and I know it's hard to monitor because I sat across at the table from a couple, and she started talking about how easy it was to get into the concert. I said, oh, I said, you don't live in Sun City? She goes, oh, no. She said, so she was sitting right across me. So I know it's 
They've got their ways of coming in and getting in. It's going to be impossible. Right. But just to add that touch, when he introduces himself, either play the tape or, or something, and just as a reminder. We appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you all for sticking it out. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please have a great evening. Betty, can I talk to you? of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.